Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back to Will's Workshop. This is leg armor making day number two. What we're doing right now is using the belt sander to round out the edges on that Kydex, like I mentioned before. We want those edges to be nice and round and smooth so that when you wear the armor, there's no chance that something's going to get caught or say you get hit in the leg, there, are, there will be no sharp corners digging into you. The other reason we round the edges is that when those plates are aligned side by side, if they were hard and square, they're not going to bend very easily. They will get caught on one another. So the rounded edges serve two purposes. They keep you safer and they allow the armor to bend where it is supposed to bend. Frosty's out there working on rounding the edges now. Uh, it's pretty dark out. It's still winter time. Luckily, it's you know roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not that bad. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna take the camera out there and uh, we'll try to get some some footage of of what we're doing with those Kydex or plastic pieces. So as always, back in a flash. Okay, so here we are on my lovely back porch. It's uh, dark. It's kind of rainy. We've got our we've got our lights set up as best as we can, and Frosty's just going through, and everywhere we've marked, he is taking it to the sander and rounding out those edges. It's super exciting, I know, but uh, it's it's all part of the process. Okay guys, so at this point, Frosty has finished rounding out all the edges. If we take a look at this smallest piece here, you'll see that we no longer have any sharp pointy corners. Further, if you look around the edges here, you can see, yeah, there's still some burring on here, a little bits, little bits of plastic that just kind of fall off when you rub on them. That's fine. The important part is that all these edges are smooth and they've been rounded and they should, when we put them to shape, not bind on each other. So let's see, this is one and this is two. So these two pieces are going to meet here and with those rounded edges, with those rounded edges, um, they should be able to hinge fairly well and they're not going to bind on each other and cause what we in the uh, sport like to call armor bind. 
That's when your armor locks up and prevents you from being able to move freely, which is never good when you're in the middle of a fight. So our next step is going to be to heat these up and actually shape them to Frosty's leg. It's a super fun process. Uh, we currently have hour oven preheating to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is quarter inch thick, so it's going to take a little bit longer to become malleable. However, we're, we're doing low and slow so to, as to avoid something catastrophic. Now, it's, it's ABS plastic, and if you look it up, uh, specifically this is nautical ABS plastic, if you look it up, it is an amorphous polymer, which means it has no true melting point, which means it shouldn't ever melt. It should just become soft and pliable. But we're still going to do low and slow for safety's sake, so it may take a couple of heats. What we're going to do is we're going to throw a single piece in the oven, and we're going to check it at five minute intervals to see if it's at a point where we can shape it. When we pull it out of the oven, we have to get it molded very quickly because it does not take very long for this stuff to cool down and become rock hard. That's one of the reasons why we use this stuff. It's easy to shape and when it's hardened, when it's cooled down and it's back to being a solid object, this stuff is tough. So. That's basically it. We're gonna get one of these guys in the oven and we'll get to shaping and we will be back in a flash. Okay guys, five minutes have passed. We're doing our first check to see if this guy is ready to be molded. So like I said, it's just a standard regular old oven set at 200 degrees. Let's get this guy out. Gloves are very important. And this guy, it's got some bend to it but it is not, it is not there yet. So we'll give it another five minutes and we'll, uh, we'll check it again and see where we're at. But yeah, it's, it's getting there. So back in the oven, we're gonna set a timer for five minutes and we'll be back. Okay guys, this is the second five minute interval. So again, here we are checking. You guys are learning as we learn what it takes to get this quarter inch stuff moldable. And unfortunately, even at, oof, yeah, no, that is not quite there yet. As you can see, it does have some bend in it and some play, but we're definitely not there yet. So back in it goes for yet another five minutes. Now we're doing this so that we can figure out the exact time. You got to understand every time we take it out, it cools down a little bit. So once we get this all figured out, we're going to have to subtract, do some math. It'll be lots of fun, but we'll figure out that, that perfect time to have this plastic in here. So again, another five minutes, back in a flash. Okay, guys, this is heat number three. It's been in for another five minutes. We're going to pull it out and test it. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. All right, so here we go, moment of truth. And this stuff is just, I think, too thick. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're changing the plans up because we've already wasted more than 15 minutes on this. This stuff has a glass point at 221 degrees Fahrenheit. What that means is the crystals inside will separate and become that, that malleable, pliable uh, form. <laughs> Sorry, losing my words there. So I think heating it up at 200 degrees isn't going to cut it. The ambient temperature of the oven is not going to raise this to the necessary 221. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump the oven up to 225. And honestly, I think for the first heat, we're going to go ahead and do 225 at 10 minutes and see if that does it. So, as always, back in a flash. Okay, guys, so this has been in here now at 225 for 10 minutes. Let's pull it out and see what we got. Cautiously optimistic here. Let's let's see what happens. So here we are. Oh man. So here's the thing. Ten minutes at 225, and there's only a slight improvement in malleability. 
we have to heat this all the way through the core. This piece of plastic has to reach 221. So I think maybe we're going about this the wrong way. I am going to go ahead and crank this oven up to, I'm going to say, 250. And we're going to leave it in there for 10 minutes at 250 and see how that does. So we're going to continue this experimentation. And I tell you what, instead of bringing you back each time we do it, because this video is going to get way too long, we're just going to continue this experimentation until we find a temp and a time that works and we'll bring you back in once we have something solid. Wanted to show you the process here, but we're gonna fast forward through the magic of video editing. So, back in a flash. All right, guys, you're gonna have to forgive the angle, but it's just me and Frosty and a tripod, so we are finally at the point where this is malleable enough to mold to Frosty's legs, so we're gonna get it out of the oven. I'll tell you the times here in a second, but this time is crucial, so here we go. Now, this bad boy, this is the front of his leg, so I'm going to line it up with this line on his jeans here. Again, it doesn't go all the way up to his hip because, well, it doesn't. But then we're going to mold it right there. Then Frosty's going to be in a little bit of pain because this is very warm. But I've got the basic shape so we can pull it off. And we just want to make sure we hold it in that shape and let it cool. This is it. <laughs> Woo! This is a thing. But once this cools, and unfortunately because it's thicker, it's going to take a minute. Um, once this cools, it should maintain this shape. So, how you feeling, Frosty? Okay. Okay? Your legs not got third degree burns? Not third. <laughs> like I said, this is a very good time to get to know your buddy. Um, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to cut it here, and then when I come back, uh, we'll have all three pieces shaped and ready to go. I just wanted to show you how we shape it. Uh, one thing that you could do if your friend is very susceptible to heat is throw a towel around his leg before you shape it. And that will help prevent him from getting burned. Um, but like I said, we're going to go ahead and we've got the time, we've got the heat. We're going to shape the other three pieces. And I will tell you what that heat and what that time is. So as always, back in a flash. Uh, Alright guys, after much experimentation for quarter inch ABS plastic, specifically nautical ABS plastic, we have finally found that a good temperature and time is 275 at around 15 minutes. Anywhere in, you know, plus or minus two or three minutes here, you should be okay. You go minus two minutes, it might still be cool enough that it's not going to bend the way you want it to. If you go over 15 minutes, it might be so malleable and so hot that it doesn't cool as quickly as you want it to and therefore you end up having to hold a burning piece of plastic to your buddy's leg longer than he can stand. So somewhere in the 15 minute range at 275 that's your goal when you're using quarter inch nautical ABS plastic. So we've got all three pieces shaped to Frosty's leg and I'm going to show you how these guys should now go together. So first we've got this piece. This is actually the, so here's, here's the side. If you're looking at the side and you're looking at Frosty's jeans, it's that seam right down the side of his leg. That's what this is right here. And this section wraps around the front of his leg. The next piece we have is the piece that meets on that seam. And if we hold them together, you can see now that this, it curves and it covers the back, I want to say quarter. This little, this curve here comes right under Frosty's butt. Now I'm going to have to have Frosty come in here because I've only got the two hands, but now we've got the third piece 
and that connects right there, and that closes the circle. That makes this wrap completely around Frosty's leg. Now we're holding this, so you have to bear with us. This isn't going to be what it looks like when it's all uh, riveted to the leather and whatnot, but it is an a pretty darn accurate representation of what this is going to look like when it's done. If we switch sides real quick, right? This is such a professional filming job here. Thank you, computer. God, we're so professional. But this, this is now in a leg shape, and you can see how these shapes all come together to form a whole piece that is going to protect Frosty's leg, especially this side where he is most likely to get hit. The rest of this, the back and the inside, you're not going to hit, get hit there as often, but it's good to have armor there anyway, just in case. Thank you, Frosty. So we've got all three pieces shaped and formed of Frosty's legs. The next steps are to drill holes and rivet those pieces to the leather in the, sp the spaces where they go. After that, of course, you add the straps, you add the attachment points for the knees, and the attachment point for where it hangs from your belt, and you have a completed piece of leg armor. Now, unfortunately, we're out of time, so Frost is going to have to take these home, but I hope this has given you some idea of the process in which we form these plastic pieces to the leg. If you'll give me just a sec, I'll wrap this video up, and of course, as always, I'll be back in a flash. Alright guys, so as I said before, that's going to wrap up the video for today. Uh, frankly, making armor always takes longer than you think it will. Always. However much time you set aside for yourself to make a piece of armor, it will take longer than what you think, no matter what you're doing. All of that being said, Frosty is now taking his bits and he's going home, and what he's going to do is he's going to go ahead and affix all those pieces to the leather that we had already cut. So those three pieces will be riveted to that piece of leather you saw in our first video where we showed you how the pieces lay out and what's that what that is going to do is finalize the shape and get it fitted around his leg once he's got that done the next step he has to do is just add the straps and drill some holes for the attachment points we will eventually show you the full and completed end product of this whole shebang, as you will. However, we just don't have time to do it today. So that means I've got to leave you. I hope that you have learned a little bit in this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of the process of making what is essentially, uh, in, in the terms of our sport, sport armor. This is lightweight armor that will get you out there, get you fighting, and keep you safe while you're doing it. This is armor to get you into the sport when you're first starting out. It's cheap, it's relatively easy to make, and it's going to keep you safe. And fourth, and what I think is the most awesome part, when it's put all together, nobody's going to know that it's plastic underneath that leather. This is a period pattern, and it's going to look like you're wearing period armor, and it's going to keep you safe. So, all of that said, and without any further ado, and without my rambling, which I tend to do, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, show me the love, give me that thumbs up. Comment on the video. If you have any questions, let me know what they are. I will answer them. Share this video with your friends. Spread the knowledge. Spread the love. Let everybody know what we're doing here. As always, and this is a sign-off that I forgot on my last video, but I'm Will. This has been Will's Workshop. You be excellent to each other. 
and we will see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.